Hello and welcome to another video from Grandstream Networks. In this video, I'm going to provide a quick overview of how GWN.Cloud works with Grandstream GWN 7600 series. GWN.Cloud is the cloud management platform for Grandstream access points and routers. It offers high scalability with support of an unlimited number of GWN access points across multiple geographical locations with zero touch provisioning. By default, GWN access points will automatically connect to GWN.Cloud when you plug them into a network with access to the internet. GWN.Cloud offers the convenience of managing, monitoring, and troubleshooting GWN access points from one single interface with the capability of scheduling and executing tasks such as rebooting, upgrading, and resetting GWN access points. Now I will switch to my GWN.Cloud account to demonstrate how to add and manage GWN access points. GWN.Cloud is a free service that you can start using by simply signing up and creating an account. So I will log in using my credentials. When you first log in, you will get the general dashboard that offers visibility into devices, clients, bandwidth usage, and any generated alerts. The general dashboard will include information regarding all the networks managed by UGWN.Cloud accounts. To simplify network deployment and management, GWN.Cloud uses the concept of networks, which could be used to represent clients, office branches, sites, companies. So as you can see here, I already have three networks plus the default one. To create a network, you simply click on create a network. Then you assign it a name, choose the country, time zone. The clone option allows you to clone settings from another network to the one that you're about to create. So I will not use any cloning, then save. Once you create the network, you will see it available here. For this demonstration, I will use this network, which is GS. So after you select the network, you can go to the overview so you can have a dashboard with information regarding that specific network. So the first step in GWN access deployments and management is of course, adding access points to the desired network. And to do that, you go to the configuration page. And as you can see, I already have three access points already added to this network. In case you want to add another access point, you can use the option add, then assign it a name, then you include the MAC address and the password. The MAC address and the password are printed in the sticker on the back of the access point. In case you want to import a large number of access points, you can use the import option. Just make sure you download the template first and then you fit it out with the information before uploading it to GWN.Cloud. There's another option where you can use GWN app, which has a built-in scanner that allows you to scan the barcode of the access point and automatically add it to your GWN.Cloud. So after you add the access points, you can always check the status and the status page. It shows you whether the access points are online or offline and plus some additional information. And one of them also is the option to locate the device in case you deploy multiple access points and you want to know which one is which. You can simply click on this icon and the access point will start blinking. So after we added the access points, we go to SSID because we need to create an SSID and then assign uh, the SSID to an access point or group of access points. By default on GWN.Cloud, GWN-Cloud is created by default. You can disable that one after you create your own. So to create a new SSID, we just click on add. We give it a name. We make sure it is enabled. The client assignment, you have two options. There's the bridge mode where the access point is going to be forwarding those DHCP requests to your router or DHCP server. Uh, the other option is NAT in case you want to create a segregated wireless network with a different subnet. And the subnet is defined under system right here. So after you create the SSID, of course, you need to choose the encryption method. Uh, you need to assign it a password. There are some additional options that you can use with the SSID, including captive portal, uh, access control using the Mac filtering, client isolation, and some advanced features like uh, Wi-Fi scheduling and voice enterprise roaming. So after you create the SSID, then you go to device membership and then you choose which access points you want them to broadcast that SSID. But if I just need these two access points, 
to be used with that SSID, I can select only these two. Then save and apply the changes. Of course, I have to define the password. All right, so now we created the uh, SSID, we added the access points. Another setting that I would like to talk about is the radio settings. So the radio configuration page works as the global templates for all the access points that you add to this network. So in case you want to make global changes to all the access points, you can make them from this configuration page. In case you want to make specific changes to a specific access point, then you go to the access points configuration page, then you select the access point and change those global settings on that specific access point. If I want to change this setting only on that specific access point, I can change the settings from using uh, radio settings to a different setting that would apply only to this access point. Save. So after we do that, there are some other settings that we can enable on the access point using the GWN.cloud. And one of them is the access control. So the access list allows you to add a list of MAC addresses that you can apply to a blacklist or a whitelist when creating your SSID. Uh, the other option is using time policy where you can define the duration of Wi-Fi access for specific users. As an example, if we're going to create a policy for guests, we can give it a name, enable the policy, and specify the duration. If, it's, if this is three hours, and then we specify the reset time, that means people who connect to whatever SSID we're going to assign this time policy to, they can only have access to Wi-Fi for three hours on a daily basis because the access point will, will reset the timer every day at 12 a.m. In addition to that, there's the option where you can specify bandwidth rules, where you can specify the amount of bandwidth that you would like to dedicate to a specific SSID or MAC address or an IP address or per client, especially when you want to assign it to an, an SSID where all the clients get the equal amount of bandwidth. For analysis purposes, you can always use the client uh, page which shows the list of clients currently connected to your Wi-Fi uh, network. It provides you with their MAC address, P address, which radio they are connected to, uh, the RSSI indicated from that specific device, especially if you're running into issues where the device is disconnecting, you can always come back here to clients and check the RSSI detected. And it also tells you which access point they are actually connected to. Uh, another option available through GWN.cloud is the Insight option, which could be used as a tool for your site survey. So the site survey option will display information regarding all the neighboring access points detected by all the access points in this network. It gives you the name, the BSSID, the channels they are using, the protocol they support, the channel width, the RSSI detected from these access points, as well as the access point that detected that specific SSID. Uh, there are some security features that you can enable on the GWN.cloud, and one of them is the Rogue AP. We made a video on YouTube on how to configure Rogue AP and how it works on the GWN.cloud. So please make sure you go to the Grandstream YouTube channel and watch that video in case you want to learn about uh, rogue APs on GW1.cloud. There is also the option of firewall where you can set rules for outbound and inbound rules. If we go to system maintenance, the maintenance page provides you with the tool to run logs on the GWN access point. So it gives you two options. It gives you two options here. In case you have your own syslog server, you can configure that. If you don't, you can use the GW1.cloud syslog server you can set the syslog level from debugging in case you are doing some troubleshooting you can always use debug if you want to capture it for two hours you can specify the time two hours and then you can select all the ap's or one specific ap in case you have some wireless clients that are experiencing issues with specific access points you can basically come here and choose which access point start the trace and once you're able to replicate that issue that the wireless client is complaining about, then you can come back here and stop the trace. And once you have it stopped, you can go here, select the access point, and then you can download the syslog. It will be displayed here with an option to download it. Once you download that one, 
then you can go to the Grandstream help desk and open a ticket with us and provide that syslog with a description of the issue. The GWN Cloud also provides you with an option to upgrade all your access points. In case you have an access point that is not running the latest firmware version, you can come here, select the access point and click on upgrade. When you do that, it provides you with two options. Do you want to use your own HTTP server or you can simply use the cloud service, which is the GWN Cloud, and you can choose whether to upgrade to the latest recommended version or you can upgrade to a specific version, especially when your access point is running an old version and you need to upgrade to a transition version before jumping to the latest one. You can schedule that one or you can execute the command immediately ju just by choosing upgrade now or I can upgrade later based on a date and time and the remark that you want to assign to that specific task. It shows here that it is scheduled and you can always go back to the change log where you can see uh, the changes that were made on that specific uh, account. It tells you who made those changes and the source IP and what changes they actually made. GW on that cloud offers administrative scalability with road based management. The super admin can appoint an administrator for specific network or group of networks and specify whether they have read only access or can make configuration changes to the network. And you can do that by simply going to users and then click on add a user. Then you enter the email address and choose the privilege that you would like to assign to that user, whether you want to assign them network administration or network administration with the read only uh, privilege. So when you choose network administration, then you can choose which network you would like to assign to that specific user. So once you add that user, GWN.cloud will send an email to that user so that they can verify the email as well as setting a password for their login credentials. To learn more about specific settings and features available through GWN.cloud, you can always go to the Grandstream YouTube channel. In the Grandstream YouTube channel, there are many tutorials available that you watch to learn about specific topics. For example, here we have a video about Rogue APs, Wi-Fi 6, Wireless Bridge, and many other topics. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.